Welcome to the second video series on my channel where we focus on the mathematical concepts behind quadcopter drone control. Today we will have a look at how you can mathematically simulate a PID controller. In the first video of this series, we developed a transfer function for the sensor and the motors, while the second video focused on the quadcopter dynamics itself. To complete the control loop, we now need to simulate the PID controller. Now, the controller consists of three different terms for which you will need three different transfer functions. In part 12 of the first video series, we developed the equation that describes a PID controller in the discrete time domain. Remember that k in this equation represents the iteration number and ts is the iteration length. For a 250 Hz loop, the iteration length is equal to 4 milliseconds. Now, how can we go from this equation in the discrete time domain to a transfer function in the frequency domain? Well, first you need to transform the equation from the discrete time domain k to the complex frequency domain z. Next, you will need to perform a second transformation from the complex frequency domain z to the frequency domain s. For the first transformation, you can use a scaling property of the z transform as displayed on the screen. To perform the second transformation, you can make use of the bilinear or Tustin equation. Now let's start with the p or proportional term of our controller, which is the easiest transformation. Because p is just a constant, the transformation from the k to the z domain and the s domain is trivial because of the linearity property for all domains. This gives us the transfer function for the p term, which is then the first transfer function of our PID controller. Let's move on to the i or integral term of the controller. The integral part of the equation in the k domain is highlighted in red on the screen, where i is the tuning constant. The z transform is up first, for which we need the scaling property in order to transform the equation from the k to the z domain. Now rewrite the equation a bit such that the i term can be displayed in function of the error. When the equation is rewritten, proceed with the bilinear or Tustin transform in order to go from the z to the s domain. By rewriting this equation, it can be simplified enormously until you obtain a very simple transfer function. The transfer function of the i term is simply equal to the constant i divided by the complex variable s. Let's insert this transfer function in our control loop and move on to the derivative or d term of the controller. The derivative part of the equation in the k domain is highlighted once again in red on the screen, where d is a tuning constant. First, we need to perform the z transform using the scaling property. Rewrite the equation a bit before proceeding with the bilinear or Tustin transform. Once again, you get a very complicated looking equation which can be simplified a lot by rearranging the terms in the nominator and the denominator. Because ts is equal to 4 milliseconds for our control loop, the transfer function for the d term is equal to the d constant multiplied by the complex variable s, divided by 1, added with s multiplied by 0.002. By inserting the transfer function for the d term, we have finally completed our control loop. If you would demand the desired roll weight in this control loop of 30 degrees per second at the 1 second mark and after an additional second require a 0 degrees per second roll weight, the motor input command and the real quadcopter roll weight that are the result from the closed control loop are illustrated in red and black on the screen. At each step change, the quadcopter roll weight overshoots the desired roll weight with almost 20 degrees per second, but within half a second it is stable again. When looking at the commands sent to the motor, you see that they follow the changes in the desired roll weight closely. Notice that the commands saturate at plus minus 400 microseconds. This was already programmed in the flight controller and can additionally be simulated as well. With a mathematical representation of the full control system, it is possible to optimize the response of the system by adjusting the PID values. The PID values for our quadcopter roll weight controller are displayed on the screen. These optimal PID values can be calculated with the knowledge of all transfer functions in our control loop, which we now have. 
The next video will show you how to optimize the PID values based on the root locus methods. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the series. And remember that you can find all tutorials on YouTube and the full drone codes on GitHub. The manual which contains all explications is available as well on GitHub if you need some more information. Thanks for watching and see you next time.